For shaitan, mankind is a spectrum of potential targets. Some are easy prey, effortlessly swayed by feeble whispers, whilst others strike fear and dread in shaitan's heart. Umar worked tirelessly to be from the latter category until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted it to him. As is well known, shaitan would flee from Umar. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, he said once Umar asked permission to enter upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, while several Qurashi women were sat with the Prophet. They were talking to him and requesting extra financial support with their voices raised. The moment, however, they heard the voice of Umar seeking permission to enter, the women hurriedly got up to veil themselves. This, of course, was before the hijab was made compulsory. The Prophet ﷺ gave permission to Umar, and the moment he entered, he saw the Messenger ﷺ smiling. Umar politely said, May Allah Almighty always keep you happy, O Messenger of Allah, as if to ask what makes you smile. The Prophet ﷺ said, I am astonished at these women who were with me. As soon as they heard your voice, they rushed to cover themselves. Umar said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, you have more right to be feared by them than me. Then Umar turned to the women and he said, O oh, enemies of your own souls, do you fear me and not the Prophet of Allah? They replied, Yes, because you are harsher and fiercer than the Prophet of Allah. And upon hearing this, the Prophet said to Umar, O son of Al Khattab, I swear by the one who possesses my soul. Whenever shaitan sees you treading a path, he looks for a different path to walk away from yours. Allahu Akbar. As far as the devil was concerned, Umar was a hopeless case. I wonder how shaitan behaves when he sees us treading a path. Does he wave his white flag and surrender and retreat? Or does he cynically grin knowing that he has guaranteed a catch for the day? Our individual response to his next whisper will be the answer to this question. For Umar, however, it didn't stop there. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud narrated that a man from among the humans once went out and was met by an individual from the jinn who said, Will you wrestle me? If you throw me to the ground, the jinn said, I will teach you a verse from the Quran which if you recite it when entering your house, no devil will enter. So they wrestled and the human being threw him to the ground. The human being then said to him, I see that you're very weak and your forearms are like the front paws of a dog. Are all the jinn like this or is it only you? And he responded, I am of the strongest amongst them. And so let us wrestle again. So they wrestled and again the human being threw him to the ground. So in keeping with his promise, the jinn taught the human being the verse from the Quran. And he said to him, He said, you are to recite Ayatul Kursi, the verse of Kursi. He said, because anyone who recites it when he enters his house, the devil will escape passing wind like that of a donkey. Ibn Mas'ud, who is the narrator, of this incident, he was asked, was that man Umar? And he responded, Man asa an yakuna illa Umar. Who else could it have been other than Umar? It was not only the devils of the jinn who feared Umar, but the devils of mankind as well. Allah tells us that devils are not only the unobservable ones, but that some human beings are devils in their own right as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍ عَدُوًا شَيَاطِينَ الْإِنسِ وَالْجِنِّ And so we have appointed for every prophet enemies, devils among mankind and jinn. Allah Almighty also said in reference to the devils, مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ وَالنَّاسِ they are of jinn and of men. However, we should be more wary of the human devils than those of the jinn because they can be far more wicked, even though many Muslims tremble at the thought of jinns. And indeed, no campfire is complete without a good jinn story. When a devil from the jinn whispers, the protection is simply to remember the name of Allah. At once, the jinn will withdraw, humiliated and disgraced. The matter, however, is altogether different for the devils of mankind. If the whole Quran was to be recited upon them, they may not sees in their wickedness, whisperings, or evil influence. Umar's honor, therefore, of having both categories of devils fear him presents as even more impressive. Our mother Aisha narrates an incident that she would never forget. She said the Prophet ﷺ was once sat down when we suddenly heard children making noise. The Prophet stood up to see what was happening. An Abyssinian woman was dancing. The children had gathered all around her. The Prophet ﷺ called me. He said, Aisha, come and watch. I came to him and I placed my 
chin over the Prophet's shoulder and watched through the space between his shoulders and head. The Prophet ﷺ asked me several times, have you had enough? And I kept saying no, just to see how much he cared for me. Meanwhile, Umar passed by and at once the gathering dispersed. Upon seeing this, the Prophet ﷺ said, Inni la ila al insi wal jinni qad farru min Umar. I see that the devils from among the jinn and the humans have both fled at Umar's arrival.